The Bitcoin pullback has turned into the Bitcoin crash as we see major liquidations coming back into this market. And Bitcoin is back around prices that we have not seen since nine days ago, nine whole days. So you know that's very, very serious. And this is certainly going to be uh, the worst case scenario as we get into it. And actually, in a more sincere tone, want to be drawing some comparisons between a past market cycle and what we're seeing right now, because it was actually one of my most big mistakes from the past market cycle. And uh, and if I can do anything about it this time, I would like to actually avoid that and provide a little bit of uh, at least experience um, from what I saw during that time. And, uh, and of course, you can draw your own conclusions from that. Anyways, uh, should follow up. Well, we don't necessarily have to follow up on the setup right here. The 12 hour and the daily setup, both closing on Monday. In hindsight, it was a pretty damn good closing price. Of course, uh, didn't necessarily predict that things were going to come this far down. But if you are following this setup, I would say that at minimum, I would not be um, you know interpreting this move as a fake out uh, with actionable steps as long as Bitcoin is below that red moving average, that five exponential right there, which is pretty much just a hair below 61,000 bucks as it is right now. Now, I suspect that we're probably not going to see much today. In fact, I want to you know continue to remind myself to continue to, to state my overall thoughts on this market that we're still very likely range bound. Our Bitcoin and cryptocurrency uh, are very likely range bound between now and you know probably the last portion of September, around September 19th. 19th, I believe is the is actually my boxing match, but um, I believe September 19th or September 20th is a quad witching date or is the next quad witching date, which is likely where things are going to start to you know turn around. So just you know eating up time between now and then, and that's what I suspect things are going to mostly be um, you know generally sideways until then. So going into some daily statistics before we get into the actual uh, meat of this one, I do want to point out that Wednesday, like Tuesday, is more weighted towards negative closures since 2024 began, but Wednesday Wednesday, unlike Tuesday, actually has the highest positive returns for those positive closing Wednesdays, which is just over 41% of those Wednesdays uh, with the with the negative closing Wednesdays, losing an average of just under 2%. So uh, actually kind of like the reversal of what we saw on Tuesday, where Tuesday typically has the worst negative return, or it does have the, neg the worst negative returns, and also very, very likely to close um, <clears throat> negatively as well, which is what we did see yesterday. Uh, did certainly come further down than about 2.5%, uh, but, uh, but in this case, we can once again look at Wednesday and draw this for you know likely ranges to the downside, shaving off almost too much. Uh, sorry, 2% of price action. Um, it's too much. It's too much. To, no, it's, uh, would put Bitcoin back down around uh, yesterday's wick low, which is very low, $58,000. And of course, if it were to play out the upside of this, uh, given that average return of 3.5%, that would actually put Bitcoin... Um, somewhere around 61 and a half thousand bucks. I do suspect that Bitcoin can very easily retest yesterday's wick low, but I would be looking for Bitcoin to more or less hold here, um, maybe even try a slight upside move, perhaps today uh, slash tomorrow, Thursday. Um, but overall, it's still just an you know it's it's still just a range play. There's not really anything new here to be looking at. Uh, unfortunately, is if if you're on the higher term time frames, obviously you're on the lower term time frames. I mean, that was a significant move, so to speak. But realistically, you know, Bitcoin more or less in the same range that it has been for since you know early august this whole month essentially um you know august typically a very boring month and that's what we've gotten anyways moving on from there i do want to get into the new five-day open because the new five-day open has um, revealed quite a few things first when we go to five-day stochastic momentum we can see that it actually is positioning itself as of right now to cross the upside on the next period closure which is not for another uh five days because it just closed last night so obviously this one did fail the momentum pivot from last night <clears throat> but with the way that the momentum pivot has opened up into this new uh you know into this new period it has actually moved down significantly to 50 just under 56,000 bucks so that is to say that as long as bitcoin maintains this next five day period above 56,000 bucks i do think that you are going to get you know likely the next sort of uh, slightly higher low here and uh and also i would add that this would very likely give it the whoops i guess i already have it in there uh would very likely give it the juice to break this trendline regression that has been governing the highs since March. So yeah, I'm talking about the March highs, I'm talking about the April highs, and I'm talking about the June highs. Um, you know, if, if assuming that Bitcoin does remain above about 56,000 bucks in the next five day period, you're very likely to see that break, which is an early indication that, you know, this range actually will uh, bust onto the upside. 
Um, but, uh, but for right now, things are, again, more or less boring, more or less sideways. And in the short term, can we see another test of the downside? Sure. Yeah, that doesn't really do. Uh, I mean, that it doesn't really do anything for the overall um, uh, structure. Anyways, moving on from there and actually getting into what I really wanted to talk about today, which was, as I alluded to at the beginning of this video, um, my biggest mistake, my biggest mistake from the year 2020 was during this period right here. Let me just pull back to it. Uh, let's go all the way to, yes, indeed, right here in 2020. So um, in 2020, Bitcoin had the halving uh, around April, May, and then entered into this period, uh, which was basically all of summer from May to October, where it was essentially sideways it did put in higher lows the whole way through um, on your higher term time frames obviously on the daily right here it entered into a slight downtrend um, but still on the higher term time frames like the five day and the weekly did hold these higher lows and while price action was you know is kind of moving i suppose uh realistically these were all just the same range as the whole way through and in hindsight a major opportunity as you, as you can see right here <laughs> price action exploded to the upside you know you have a couple similarities one with the halving two um we we spoke about this this, uh, a couple times over the past week, but this red vertical bar right here represents uh, the same jewel setup that we had, that we did see uh, is going on right now as well, where the jewel has actually crossed back above 50 on that slight blue tick, and we saw the same thing over here too. And on top of that, with the way that price action is acting right now, well, <clears throat> Bitcoin. I mean. Bitcoin is still, if we put it on, well, let me actually put it on uh, a line chart, is still, technically speaking, on a higher low, a very slightly higher low, but that is exactly what it was back in 2020 as well. Very slight higher low right here, coming into almost the same time as well. This one being put in in late September, um, uh, you know, after essentially a, a, a summer of very boring sideways. Uh, in again, in hindsight, you know, very little happened here. But of course, you know, this is what launched that major run, um, you know, for the rest of the year into 2021. So, you know, that was one of the major mistakes that I made back then that uh, I did get bearish on that last move to the downside in 2020, um, not realizing that or not paying attention to the higher term timeframes like the five day, the weekly, the monthly, which were still on higher lows, but the daily had entered into a bit of a short term downtrend, which is exactly what we have here as well. In fact, looking at the daily, we do see that Bitcoin actually does have a higher high compared to what we did see in early August, the 8th of August. That was a very key ingredient of this last move to the upside, confirming that low that we did see um, in, you know, in early August that, you know, reached all the way down actually below 50,000 bucks. And in this case, you know, as long as Bitcoin is closing higher term timeframes above about 57,000 bucks, or let's just call it 58,000 bucks, kind of round up there a little bit. Um, I do believe that we're seeing something relatively similar here as uh, major moving averages and oscillators start to switch around into a long-term bullish posture. But hey, here's the thing. I will be wrong on this, phenomenally wrong on this, if you do see price action, especially below about $57,500 uh, on a closing basis. That would be a big, 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 big problem and uh, kind of destroy that relationship, thus putting in you know, a, you know, a, you know, a lower low here, which is what this is all kind of predicated upon. So, uh, so you know, as it stands right now, um, I do think that this move is, I mean, I, th I think it's ripe for a fake out, to be honest with you. Um, could it look something like this and, and again, draw its way into middle of September? Yeah, I, th I think that we're just eating up time here. So this can take a long time to shake itself out. It's just I would hesitate based upon my prior experience to get super bearish until Bitcoin really does take out this low that you saw from middle of August, uh, again, below about $57,500, which is pretty close to, cr uh, to current price action. Again, on a close Closing base such it out as well, um, but uh, but for right now, you know, still holding in there. So I don't really have a you know what. While this one did pull back, I think more than what most people wanted. I don't really have any major issues with this. Again, it's a timing factor right now. Timing until mid to late September. You know, it's just just eating up time. I, I just don't expect anything uh, significant, uh, especially to the upside, as long as, you know, we're not around that end portion of September. So anyways, I think that, oh, actually one last thing here. Let's go to the HPDR bands. Um, we can see on the five day, Bitcoin definitely did get rejected from the 38.2 level. So at best, we are range bound in this lower block. Uh, no doubt about that. 
other than that, I'm not really getting too much from this, you know, just in the same, basically same shit that we saw from the 8th of, uh, 8th of August to the 22nd of August. And I expect that this will go on for, you know, another week or two. Um, so it's just going to be more and more boring. And that, you know, that is what it is as people continue to leave this space, um, you know, with Bitcoin not really doing anything as far as like the headlines go. So anyways, I think that is good for today's video. I think we'll probably end things on that uh, on that note as well. Um, again, as as far as I'm concerned, as long as Bitcoin's closing daily is about fifty seven and a half thousand dollars, especially on CME. Do you think that uh, probably this this offers up an opportunity? Something like this can you know can drop back down into there, but uh, I would be I would still be skeptical on this being like a real breakdown with real fall through until you do get those closures below. And at that point, yes, okay, obviously very very big problems. You can expect price action back down to very low fifties. But um, again, that was a mistake that I made in twenty twenty. You know, I was looking for price action at that point to come back down to low nine thousands when it, in reality it did hold just above. Uh, sorry, just below 10,000. Um, so, uh, so, so for myself, I made a big note of that. Anyways, that's where we'll end things right now. As always, I want to wish you the best of the best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.